Dear students, the key points as far as secretory otitis media are concerned are the first important point here is the eustachian tube disorder. So whenever there is a eustachian tube dysfunction, you get a secretory otitis media or whenever there is a eustachian tube block, you get a secretory otitis media. So what are the most common causes of secretory otitis media in children? Adenoid enlargement is the most common cause of secretory otitis media and this most often presents as bilateral in children. So when we talk about adults presenting with a unilateral secretory otitis media, you need to do a diagnostic nasal endoscopy because nasopharyngeal carcinoma blocking the eustachian tube can produce secretory otitis media. So when you talk about secretory otitis media, remember it has got a intact tympanic membrane there is no perforation in the tympanic membrane and beyond the intact tympanic membrane you get an air fluid level you get a blue drum and this is diagnostic of a secretory otitis media so when you do a tympanometry you get a characteristic b type of curve and produces a conductive hearing loss on a pure tone audiometry. So when you talk about secretory otitis media, what is the treatment of choice? You give a radial incision in the antero inferior quadrant of the pars tensa and insert a grommet and this is the treatment of choice for secretory otitis media. In adults, you have to treat the underlying cause for secretory otitis media.